Sometimes I feel like a motherless child, which is ridiculous, really. I'm 51 and my mum died in 1995 when John Major was prime minister and live streaming was a canoeing event. It's true, though. Like I'm almost gone. Oh, 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 And here's the thing. Jessie Norman wasn't singing about her mum. She was putting her finger with all the heritage and tragedy of her people's story on something about our human experience. Because we all feel a long ways from home, at least some of the time, don't we? even when maybe you and I have barely left our homes for two months. We feel like we've been left on our own with an overwhelming task that we're not equipped for, like we've all been orphaned too early. Or is that just me? So here are two pieces of good news for people who feel like motherless children. Number one. In God, we live and move and have our being. Paul said that. He'd been wandering around Athens and he saw some temples and he saw idols everywhere. And as a Jew, he must have felt really out of place. He must have felt a long, long ways from home. But you noticed, didn't you, in that reading, he doesn't say, you horrible idolaters, how dare you? God is a long way from you. No, he says, God isn't far from any one of us. God isn't far from any one of us. Far from home in an alien religious setting, but he knows God isn't far. So he says, in God, we live and move and have our being. Who said that? Paul said that, yes. But before Paul said that, who said that? Someone else said it. A Greek pagan poet called Aratus said it. Paul only quotes Greek poetry twice in the New Testament. Both times it's Aratus. Both times it's this same poem. So I'll tell you a secret. I think Paul probably only knew one Greek poem, but he does like the idea. In God we live and move and have our being. So when lockdown gets too much, well, I try and remind myself that I live in God, and I move in God, and I have my being in God. 
God before me, God above me, God beside me, me in God. This world is not boring or lifeless or unenchanted, even the little bit of it that you get to see at the moment. It is charged with the glory and presence of God. In God we live and move and have our being. So, do you know, do you want to know why I'm banging on about this? I'm banging on about this because somebody told me they couldn't feel the presence of God in their kitchen, but only in a church building. Now, they knew that God was everywhere, but they couldn't feel God in their home. Well, people of God, God wants you to learn to feel God's presence in your kitchen and in your hallway, and in your good times, and in your bad times, and in coronavirus, and in good health. If there ever was a time in the history of the church when there's a chance we might learn that truth, it's in 2020. Why? Because well, we can't go to church. We, we can't go to a pilgrimage site or one of the thin places where God feels close. Instead, we have to learn to find God in the fat places, in the chaos, in our homes. Bishop Stephen, I, I guess I should now learn to call him Archbishop Stephen, um, he put it this way. Interconnected households and now the center of worshiping life. Exactly. What an amazing privilege for me to speak to interconnected households across Old Molsham and Tile Kiln and Molsham Lodge right now. And we will discover in our interconnected households that God was never tied to a certain building anyway. Here's Archbishop Stephen again. At the resurrection, people looked for Jesus in a tomb, but they were looking in the wrong place. Today, some people think they'll find God when the church buildings reopen, but they too are looking in the wrong place. In God, we live and move and have our being. Breathe in and know that you are breathing in the presence of God who is around you. It's all right, you can breathe out now. Oh. Oh. And here's the second bit of good news. I will not leave you as orphans, says Jesus. So the scene is, it's after the Last Supper. Jesus and his friends are in Gethsemane. Judas is on his way. Jesus is going to be killed. Yet he says they're not going to be left as orphans. That made me jump. How does that work? Yes, Jesus is going to rise from the dead, but then 40 days later, next Thursday, he's going to ascend and leave them, and yet he says they're not going to be left as orphans. How does that work? Well, here's the promise in full. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, dwells with you and will be in you. 
I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. So the way Jesus promises not to leave us as orphans is by coming to us by the Spirit who dwells with us and will be in us. This is so important. Paul told us, quoting a Greek poet, that God will be all around us and in God we live and move and have our being. And now Jesus tells us that God will be within us by the Spirit as well, so that in us God will live and move and have a being. God around us, God within us, God knowing us completely, God loving us unconditionally. So breathe out, brothers and sisters. Breathe out and feel the life of God within you, animating the breath as it leaves your body. It's, it's all right. There is nothing scary or spooky about the Holy Spirit. The Spirit's character is exactly the same as the character of Jesus, and the Spirit is within you. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child, a long ways from home, but I'm not. And most days, even when I'm socially distanced from the rest of the world, I'm learning to remember that. I am a much loved child of God. And God is pleased, pleased to be around me the way that water surrounds a fish and to fill me the way that beer fills a pint glass. Amen.